Hi guys, I'm here today to talk about what to do when your sacrum goes out. My sacrum went out yesterday from doing a kickboxing session um, with that really fast, aggressive kicking action, um, which kind of tucked my pelvis and it just knocked the right side of my sacrum out. Uh, which is a very familiar feeling for me. So when we use yoga therapy movements to bring the sacrum back into balance, the first thing we need to do is figure out what side of your sacrum's hurting. That might be quite obvious to you, um, but it might not. So here are some tricks. I'm, I've put red dots on my body to signal and point to where the hip points are. So this is how, where they are on the skeleton. Um, the ASIS uh, or hip points, the most anterior and superior points of the hips. Um, it's helpful to see it that way. And then the pubic bone, the pubic symphysis, right, where, um, where the two hip bones meet. All right, so what these dots can help us understand is that one hip bone can move wider and tuck backwards. The other one can move in and move down and forwards. So these dots um, are not necessarily even with each other. On the back of the pelvis, I've placed yellow dots. So we have a dot on the posterior hip points. Um, it's this area, the PSIS, helps us find the joint where the sacrum and the hip bone meet. So anytime you have two bones meeting, we've got a joint. And find, being able to locate these points on you and see if they're tender helps you to understand if your sacrum is out. It can help you understand the sensation that you're feeling through the back of the pelvis. So finding these areas can be really helpful. Using the dots or just using your fingers, find the bony hip prominences. These are the hip points, they stick out. You may have to like kind of feel around. You've got these hip bones and you're looking, so it might be soft and squishy, and then you go up and then it gets hard, and then you go up and it, it's still hard, but it moves farther away from the front body. So we're trying to find the boniest part that's the most forward in the body the most anterior. So those are, that's the ASIS, those are the hip points. Now, when my sacrum's out, sometimes that one of the hip points is much higher and much wider. And this is why it's helpful to look in the mirror. Um, and the other one will be down and in. So again, the hip bones have rotated against each other in that scenario causing the sacrum to go out a bit. And so this can be very helpful for you to see and learn to see. The other thing that often happens when one of the, when the hip bones rotate in that way is the hips will laterally shift. So if you just let your arms hang, um, what you'll see here in my body, and you'll check by looking at yourself in the mirror, is that there's a lot of space between this arm and my hip, and hardly any space, there's no space, I'm touching, my arm is actually touching the hip here. And so if I center my hips, it's a little bit more ouchy, and so my body has kind of done this shifting pattern as a way to ease the pain. This is another way to see and start to understand what's happening in your body when you've got this sacroiliac pain. There are different types of sacroiliac pain. So when you're having diffuse or sharp or localized pain through the back of the pelvis, you wanna to start to think about where am I feeling this? Sometimes people say, well, I have back pain. And then I ask them where, and it's, it's actually on the pelvis. And sometimes people say they have hip pain and then they touch here at the pelvis. So you're learning to understand what the different body parts are. So when you feel what you think might be sacroiliac pain, back pain, or hip pain, you're invited to touch the part of the body where you feel the pain. So when I'm feeling this diffuse, very familiar pain for me, it's in this like upper right buttock for me, and it's diffuse and it's over kind of a large area. And when I first woke up this morning, it was over a larger area and it has since just from moving around shrunk a bit. But when I touch the PSIS and these yellow dots on me are showing the posterior superior iliac spines, it's sort of the corollary to these guys in the front, right? But it's on the back body. If I dig around and I'm trying to feel these two bumps on the back of the pelvis, 
Now they're bumpier for me, but for some people they're actually dimples. So when you go to the beach, you'll see above someone's like bikini bottom, they have like two dimples that are visible. And that's where that fascia pulls in tightly. And it's a hint as to where the sacroiliac joints are. So the sacrum being the triangular shaped bone in the middle of the back of the pelvis. And then you have an ilium on each side. Where two bones meet, you have space, you have a joint, and that's where movement can happen. When there's excessive movement or restricted movement, you can get pain in the SI joint or joints, right? There's two, there's one here and one here where the hip bone meets the sacral bone. So part of your daily exploration of your body and throughout your movement practice would be to get familiar with this area. And when one or both of these are tender, uh, it, it's my understanding that the, the fascial network that's, that helps to stabilize this area against excessive movement has been strained. And so it will feel tender in that area. So even if you can't find these dimples or these bumps, when you start digging around and poking around and feeling with your hands, you might get to this area close to the middle of the pelvis, right, on either side of the spinal midline where you're seeing like, ah, that's tender, right? And sometimes you don't even have diffuse pain. You might ha have any pain at all, but these things are still tender. And this is a great warning sign from the body that can help us adapt our movement pattern and use some therapeutic techniques to ease and get rid of this tenderness. It shouldn't be tender.